watcha, yum yum, mama watcha. If I was singing and you could see the gap in my tooth, you'd see me fine if my head wasn't chopped off about here. Um, but then you don't see any of that. Don't like that. Only we could get in a bit more of an angle. Um, so there's a shelf that goes all the way along here. I could make a it really should be from the ceiling. It should be swivel. I just know it. Don't want to do it, but I just know it. Yeah. Got to get this right. Got to get this right. Um, if I did it in the corner, it would really not even see anything. It would just see me. Yeah, that's, that's a garbage idea. If it was behind, it would see my back. You could, I don't know, you know. If it was behind, it might work. But. You wouldn't really see me, which isn't a bad thing, because you wouldn't see my tooth. Um, it would be good if it was more of an all-round view from behind, as long as you could see the kit. That's the important thing. There is no way really to put it over there. The guitar is hanging on the wall. I wouldn't be able to see the picture. At least now I can get up and go and look at the picture and make sure I'm happy. But if it's up there, I'm not going to have that. And that, that's risky. I suppose everybody who makes podcasts and does videos goes through this, this garbage. As my Emma will tell you, and I will tell you, I spend more time up here doing other things than actually making music. I don't know why I kept it. I do. I love it. Don't get me wrong. But we'll get there. We'll get there. So... I really think that needs to be about here. I've got some screws holding the roof up. I did all this myself. But I've um, got some screws holding each board up so I could e I've got brilliant mounting places. And I really think I need to hang the tablet and it needs to be able to swivel. Might need to swivel both ways. That's a nightmare. I mean, like an upside down TV stand. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. And I don't actually want to. I do not want to do too much that dedicates half the room to a bloody tablet. It's not going to happen. At the moment, it's balanced on a toolbox and I can lose the toolbox. That's actually quite good. Um, so I'll be able to see by all the yapping I've done how, how it seems to look with me there. Obviously, you won't see half the music stuff. Um also not sure about the resolution. I mean, it's an old tablet. Galaxy, it's Android, what, S4 or something? I don't know. It's S6, I think, ancient. Uh, so for now, we'll stick to that. This is JSM. Everybody's heard of me, but nobody knows me. Uh, amplifier, speakers. Keyboard, Windows 98 PC that runs all the MIDI and it runs a Winman MIDI Man 4x4 card. And to be honest, I've had a lot of problems with that for a long time. But that problem seems to have completely disappeared. And it could have been my own fault because when I replaced the motherboard, I didn't reinstall the software. I replaced the motherboard with uh, the exact same make and model and Asus. I only buy Asus. And um, obviously even a motherboard, if it's the exact same make and model, it's still a different motherboard. So maybe I caused the problem, but I've always had a problem with the MIDI card sometimes just not being seen. And for all you out there that remember Windows 98, if Windows 98 can't see your card that you're putting in, and it's the old black slot. So what's that? PCI, is it? I can't remember. It's the old bugger. It's the really old one before all the ISIS. And um, if Windows 98 doesn't see whatever card you're putting in, it's a nightmare. And it is a nightmare. It's a nightmare just to install 98 on a 
clean system. Unbelievable. But anyway, we got there. And since I did that, the MIDI, Winman MIDI Man 4x4 has not crashed once. And I will say on the record, that when that card runs, it has never, ever played up. I can honestly say I don't know what a missed MIDI note is or something like that because I've never had it. I did a long time ago when I was recording Take Me Up on a CD for Verjam Records, V-E-R-J-A-M, not Virgin, V-E-R-J-A-M. And I remember it skipping once here and I thought, oh, recorded it again and it was fine. Since then, I mean, that's over 20 years ago. So this Winman Midi Man 4x4 is a four midi out, four midi in, so that's 16 per channel, 64 item, uh, things you can be controlling via midi, and it's never played up. It's just I've had more problems with the PC. So anyway, that's been running fine for a while. I used to use a, a Sound Blaster, ooh, is it an Audigy, four or five, whatever. And you could get it to run on the old SB16 drivers. And the sound quality you get on recordings is amazing. That's why I'm doing it this way. You don't get as good a sound quality on recording when you go up to XP. I think it's Windows 98 Second Edition and onwards. Things change on your USB and things change on the sound in and sound out. And I can't tell you what it is because I'm just not versed enough i don't know enough to tell you but what i do know is on windows 98 servers pack one or first sorry first edition uh the recording i get is amazing it and i mean amazing that although it's changed now because i don't use the uh sb card i use uh oh what do you call it it's another midi thing uh i think it's basically got four audio in, four audio out, left, right, left, right. And um, that's really good. It's I'm impressed with it. And that's ancient as well. It's, it's, a, it's an old device. But I never had a need for that until I needed to rip all our cassettes from 20 to 30 years ago. So I needed to be able to record the four-track um, Tascam Porta 1, which is falling apart. I mean, you know, it's it's, it's been to hell and back. So the Tascam Porta 1 had to be ripped all four tracks simultaneously. So that's why I bought that. And in hindsight, it was a blessing for the studio because it now gives me an extra four ins. And um, I, I don't really use them, but it, they're there. And the having the ability for four ins and four outs, I've never experienced that. It's a godsend. So I'm um, back to the PC. The PC, Win Windows 98 on an Asus motherboard. I tend to, it only does MIDI now. I don't even use Cool Edit Pro on it. Uh, and then the other, the other thing you might be aware of, I use Cool Edit Pro version 1.2. Don't like version 2. It's not quick enough for me. Um, and then, okay, you guys are all going to be on the, the latest stuff, the Adobe's and the plugins and the modulars. I've never seen it. And to be brutally honest, I think I'm just, too stuck in my ways to even go near that kind of stuff. Um, I'm very happy on Cool Edit Pro 1.2. I've, to be honest, I've said it on my website. That software was written for me. That software works the way my brain works. Here's a funny thing about Cool Edit Pro 1.2. I am quick. I am quick. But why am I quick? The daft thing is, I use the same controls, you're going to like this, as in Quake 1 and Doom 1 and Doom 2. I've set the controls up the same way I used Quake. And so when I'm zooming into the left edge of the waveform or to the right edge or I'm flipping, reversing, I just move my fingers with the left, right, up, up and down arrow key, the control, the num lock zero. So my hand floats around there. And it impresses me how quick I am. But to be honest, I'm an old schooler. So the new software, 
I don't think it's going to work for me because a lot of the music I do now, especially now, is in my head. So I do 90% of it downstairs on one of the house PCs, do the hard work, stick the samplers on a USB stick, bring them up here, use the laptop on the wall that runs XP. It's a Dell Latitude 610, does nothing but talk to the sampler via the USB. So that talks to the Akai 6000, and that's never played up once. My advice to you is don't try and get Windows 7 or uh, the modern software to talk to Akai Sys. Stick to XP, you can't go wrong. That's never played up once. The only time that plays up is when I'm putting too many samples in. That, funnily enough, has happened on the mix that I'm doing at the moment. So I just have to take things out, put things in to try ideas. So... um this is my little setup. So you've got the keyboard here. That's a Korg 01 FD. Um, it, you have to actually press the sequence or the combi now buttons, or sometimes power down, switch on and change it. Because ever since I stripped it to repair the display light, and sadly that still doesn't work. I, I'm, I think I made a mistake and I, put the new light in parallel with the old one whereas i should have removed the old one but when you see what you have to do to remove it pfft, life's too short sorry so i have to use a little torch and look at my corrigo 1fd but it's an old bugger like me and that's just the way i like it so that's a corrigo 1fd standard pioneer amp two speakers the speakers are shit but i, I that's something i have to look at akg c3000 microphone i love it i love it i love it I really might treat myself to another one one day because I want to get into the habit of recording my voice in stereo. Okay, it's not proper stereo. It's just two microphones, one on the left of you, one on the right. But I want to experiment with that and see what I can do. Um, there's the display for the Akai 6. I made a silly little wooden stand. The Akai 6 is down there. Um, there's the Yamaha Pro 1 under a bit of... Um, covering because this house gets very dusty i think it's because we're across the road from a college and we're right outside where their extractors are so it, it is what it is happiness comes from within and that's the display for the um, windows 98 pc so this is my little setup it's not really much to it the keyboard the computer the sampler and the mixer and the funny thing is a lot of the stuff i do tends to be in my head and then i go and put it in a sampler and then I feed it through a mixer. And some people might say, well, you don't need that. You should just keep it all in the computer and use internal sliders, software driven. The truth is for some reason, I've always wanted the signal to come out into the real world. Me have the ability to play with it and then it can go back into the digital domain. Don't know why, I've just always known I need that, I want that. Strange, because I'm a digital person. There's no, There's no doubt about that. And um, that's the setup. The other um, Pro 1 and the Akai 3000 is under the table. In its own little rack, it lives down there. And it only gets switched on as of and when needed. And that's worked out really good. I've had to run the MIDI cable just along the uh, floor of the back attic. This is the back attic. And the actual audio signal comes up and then runs along the back of that shelf that you'll just about see, comes into the studio. And that's where all the signals go. Uh, it helps when you keep your MIDI away from your audio. Although when I discovered that problem, I then realized I've got the MIDI cables to the keyboard, all spira banded next to the audio. So the MIDI and audio run together. But to be honest, I don't use the keyboard in music at the moment. When I record, it tends to be on the fly, freestyle, straight into Kool Aid at Pro on a computer. Um, if if I change my working habits one day, like I did twenty years ago, I might have to separate the MIDI and the audio on the keyboard. And I think that's about it. And then on the wall, I'll take a few pictures in the future. There's some guitars. Two of them I've never played. Haven't played a guitar in don't know, ten, fifteen years. Hadn't played with some of this in over 10 years. Certainly haven't made any recording studio MIDI songs in over probably 10, 15, 20 years. Don't know.
<laughs> it's been that long. I don't know. The blessing is all the equipment survived apart from my Tanglewood acoustic plugging guitar. You could plug a, you could get a signal out of a jack socket from it and then stick it into your mixer. And that's because I think my nephew, when he had it, he probably just used it that much or it was just old. But I, one day after I'd serviced it, put new strings on it, cleaned it, I kept tightening the strings to tune them in. And within seconds, they were going back out of tune. And then after a while, I realized I was pulling the bottom body out of the guitar. It had just fallen apart down the bottom. Had it been banged, bashed, walloped? I don't know. But in the end, it ended up in the recycle bin because it was that bad. So lost, lost the guitar. There's been some knobs broken off the V-amp. Honestly, the equipment's in amazing condition considering what it's been through and how old it is. And I'm sure there's tons of people out there just like me that love the old school kit. And that that's probably not going to change, to be honest. Um, I think that's it. So at the moment, I'm really just testing the... Uh, I shouldn't sit so close because I want to see how much the studio we can get in with me talking. And the problem will be, if I'm sitting here talking on the microphone, singing, I actually want to eventually record me freestyling. Uh, yeah, if, it, if it's crap, so what? I don't have to pay for the storage on YouTube. Um, and if you're daft enough to watch, <laughs> press the skip button. Um, so I think that's going to cut off all this. And I, I'm looking at maybe trying to get the camera over here, but one step at a time, eh? One step at a time. But it's nice. It's it's so nice for me able for me to be able to come up here and just lose myself for a minute. Back to working habits. So I used to live on this equipment 10, 12 hours a day. And actually for 10 years, I just made music nonstop, nonstop. I should have been out there chasing new girls, but I didn't. I was making music. I was in my own little world and I loved it. Don't get me wrong. I resent some of it, but life is what you make of it. And it is what it is. It is what it is, and I am what I am. But now my working habit is much more. I'll go on a PC downstairs on my PC in the dining room. I do all the editing in my head, the tidying up, the cleaning, up, the preparation for the samples, the ideas. And then I come up here and I just chuck them together. And um, it's, a, it's a better way of working. It really is because you will never get any sampler on this planet working as well as any digital audio wave editor in a computer. And even if you're using uh, the best software at the moment with all these modules and plugins, I find it a blessing that with Cool Edit Pro 1.2, it does nothing unless you know what you want to achieve. It's just a raw editor and it's got some basic effects in it, but it's damn good at what it does. I've got to be honest. Um, I've used that. I, I think I bought that software for four hundred pound when it came out, and now you can pick it up for under ten pound if you can find it. Um, I've always used it, always will. So that does most of the donkey work with me and my head downstairs, and then I just bring the USB stick up, transfer to the sampler. I am primarily uh, sampler driven, so samples. I'm playing more. If I play and I sing and I freestyle, it always comes out spiritual stroke religious very very godly goodly that kind of thing which i love don't get me wrong I, I that's what i am i always have been that way i've become that way a lot more uh but sometimes i do miss that why in the grind in a bump and jump and give me some bass drums to thump a thump to and the other thing i mentioned on my website there is no way i can plug my own Uh, my WAF samples, I'm never going to do it off the 98 PC because it's a nightmare. It's there to do MIDI and that's it. And it does that job 100% flawlessly. And honestly, 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 I never have MIDI time issues, ping issues, uh, signals disappearing. I never have it. I never have it. But then I have also made all my own leads, all my own cables, all my old trunking and runs. Um, I am an, uh, an engineer by trade, an electrical stroke, electronic engineer. So maybe that's what helped that side of it. Um, and that's it. That's really it. The latest thing that's changed as well. Got the uh, MIDI plugs all the way from China. 
I have finished the mod on the, um, is it the Blue Dog Mixer? For the scratching. And um, I will show you that in a video one day. That will be coming out and you will be watching me demonstrate what I do. So basically it's a, cr it's a crossfader mixer, but I've extended the cable off, the cable off it that you plug and play into it. And it's just got a switch on that you switch the record player on and off. Sorry, you switch the audio output on and off. And so effectively, I'm emulating on a switch what the crossfader does or the switch on a mixer. I've never used the switches on the mixer. The truth is, me and Mark in the early days never had an SL1200 and we never had a crossfader. We didn't. We didn't have that. We just used cheap Philips uh, Hitachi record players in the house. Mine was a uh, the Pioneer. This is my original Pioneer amp. But we had to put pennies on the needle and I used to melt the middle of the record to make it fit on the pin exact. You just get by with what you got. And our, oh, excuse me, our early raps and freestyling was done, would you believe, on a cheap, it looks like a CB microphone. I just found it and wired it up and it worked and we used that. It sounded like shit, but that's what we had. Or maybe it's just because I'm Scottish and I was cheap then, just like I'm cheap now. Could be, don't know. Uh, guys and girls, that's it. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, God bless you all. God guide you all. God protect you all. Peace and blessings be upon you all. JSM is out. Okay, okay. Don't forget. Don't worry about the tooth. And I thought what I'll do, because I've just made that video, we'll film the studio quickly. So there's the guitars on the wall. You can see there's a, that bass guitar needs fixing. I've got to change all the three parts. Where's my hand? Three pots and the wiring inside because it came from another house and it fell apart inside and I don't know if I wired it up correct. That guitar is a newbie I've never played. That's my little John's guitar. Look, my little cheeky chop. That's my main guitar, which again, I haven't played for about 10 years. But to be honest, I'd rather have all them hanging on the wall than a couple of pictures. Uh, right, that's the... Uh, that talks to the sampler down there. The Akai 6000, an amazing machine. No comment on the effects. Don't use them. I don't use garbage. I use Cool Edit Pro. Uh, again, the Pro One, there it is. You've all seen a Pro One mixer. You will see it in action one day. That's the uh, controller for the Akai 6. That's a screen for Windows 98. There's my baby, that PC that is so ancient and has been running forever. It's had a few repairs, mind you, I'll tell you. The keyboard, the amp, speakers, microphone. I bet half the pros out there are looking at this and thinking of the sound dynamics. Not very good, eh? There's a big table that when I'm up here jamming away, playing around, my little boy will sit there and play GZ Quake or GZ Doom. Runes of Magic. I can't get him off Quake at the moment, and you guys might get to see that one day because he's rocket jumping, he's doing all this stuff, he's watching Quake done quick. He's learning quick. He, he, he seems to be into that stuff, but obviously you have to monitor what the kiddies can play. There's the 3000. There's the Spare Pro 1, which I might end up doing a mod to so I can nick the buttons at the top. The, um, what do they do? They boost the input. Because the ones on my mixer are playing up. So unless I can actually strip the individual micro switches. And trust me, if I can do it, I'll fix them. That's not a problem. And that's it, guys. That's just a lot of junk. Home sweet home. Right, guys. God bless you. I love you all. Peace and blessings. JSM out.